plaintiff, Viva Davis, says she's a recovering drug addict who met the defendant 15 years ago in rehab. Viva admits it was a struggle for her to get clean, but she's been sober now for 11 months. Viva is suing the defendant for a rent refund and emotional distress. Defendant Laura Hutchins says it took nine stints in rehab for her to get clean, but she has now been sober for 13 years. Laura claims her friendship with Viva ended after Viva lied about Laura attacking her, and she's countersuing for emotional distress. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. My name is Viva and I'm a recovering addict. I've known Laura and Joyce for some years, maybe 15 at the most. We fellowship, made dances, and you know, recovered together. Um, she was somebody I looked up to, the both of them, because they did a great job when it came to recovering. Me and myself, I go in and out of the, the program, not purposely, but because I can't get. How many years? I've only been clean for 11 months. I thought you said you knew him for 15 years. Oh, yeah, years. about 15, yeah. And you met him where? Oh, in a meeting. At, um, 15 years ago? Yes, sir. And you've never been clean? It was it's hard for me, Judge. How often would you relapse out of these 15 years? Um, Probably about six or seven. Six or seven times? Yeah. Okay, after and how always, long, typically? Um, I never used no longer than a year, but I stayed clean. The last time I was clean, about six years straight. Really? Yeah. And how, what caused that relapse? Um, a man. I need to leave relationships alone, and I was never Was he getting took high, or he was just stressed you into getting he high? He just stressed me into getting high, yeah. It was horrible. Don't you have a sponsor? I do. You didn't call the sponsor during those times? Actually, during that time, I wasn't in touch with her. Were you going to meetings? Yes. How many days a week were you going to meetings? Um, at least three or four. When you first relapsed? Once I come out of treatment, then I started going to meetings. I went to treatment first. How many times? I went twice this last time, back to back, because I was just... How um, many total? Um, probably about six or seven. Okay, yeah. they say seven is the charm. So have you gone seven yet? No. Yeah, people don't realize that. I'm glad you came on so we can educate folks. I had someone I had putting in, in and out, in and out, very close relative, seven times. Wow. And it wasn't to the seventh time. Seven stints in rehab. That's a lot. You give me some background on your uh, friendship with the uh, plaintiff and your observation of her recovery, and then uh, your own. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, she was right. We've been knowing each other about 15 years. Uh, we met at a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. We made various events together. Uh, me, myself, I've been clean 13 years. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I've been clean 13 years, and I, I observed Ms. Davis going in and out, and that's why I tried to reach out to her this last time, you know, because I love her. I love her, how and I want to see stay, her get How were you able to stay clean? Uh, it took about nine treatment centers for me. Uh, in, inpatient treatment? Inpatient nine treatment. Nine times. Nine times, and uh, what was the charm for me was that I didn't leave five minutes before the miracle happened. The last time I went to treatment, I refused to go home. I stayed, I went from treatment to residential, and I stayed under the umbrella for two years because that's what it took Sober for house. me. Sober Yes, yeah. For I stayed two in a, years. I stayed for two years, yes I did. And then I got my own place and went on with my life. You know, it was a, a sober apartment building. Mm -hmm. So, and I stayed there for two years because that's what it took for me. All right, how often did you go to meetings when you were in sober house? I went to, oh, we were, we were required to make three meetings a week, but I made a meeting every day because yeah. I had a sponsor that required yeah. step work. She required meetings. We went to dances together. Mm. We, we traveled all over the country together. I spoke all over the country at various conventions uh, for Narcotics Anonymous, so, yeah. I mentioned one that I had trouble with, but I can mention another. Uh, my best friend, um, he never went inpatient treatment. Instead, he went three NA meetings every day mm. for mm. about 10 years. Yeah. I thought it was the craziest thing I ever seen. <laughs> And he said that's what he had been told, you have to go. If you're not going in-house, you got to be at those meetings more than once a day. 
Yes. To continue to reinforce, continue to reinforce. If you had a meeting every three to six of your waking hours, you would hope during that little three hour stint, you can <laughs> yeah. survive to the next meeting. Right. <laughs> so I guess that's the thinking. Yeah. Tell me what happened with this rent refund and emotional distress. Well, I paid her rent until I found me somewhere to go. She okay. was supposed to help me. How much was the rent to be? Right. The rent was three fifty. I was staying at her house. I had a protective service case. When did you move in? I moved in September, around September the 1st or 3rd, because um, I, I had 18? just got it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I moved in, and everything was fine. She even started going to meetings with me, trying to help support me, and I appreciated that. Um, we did dances. We did a lot of things together, picnics. She was, she, Laura's a good person. Mm -hmm. I just felt like something went wrong with us, because I love her, too. And, um... I um, had a PS case, and um, she was well, helping me with it. After we went to a, um, we worked the polls, November the 6th. And I Dancing? Had the, the, um. Oh, election. <laughs> the election. election polls. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those polls are on the 5th. <laughs> the election. Okay. We was doing work in the office for the election. Got it. All right. Okay. Election. Um, and I had paid her on the first, so we get to the election part, but I had noticed some behaviors about her, and I, I confronted her, but when I asked her, I took her off to the side, and I, I didn't say, was you getting hot extra? Are you okay? And I said it just like that. She said, what you mean? I said, Lord, you you taking them pills and you change. I've seen her change more than once. Um, I, I've even been. With, do I know don't of? know. When she say her back is is messed up, I've been to the therapy with her, but I've never seen a doctor write her no script for these pills. That I confronted her, and if I knew that it would make her act the way she acted toward me, I wouldn't I have did that. that. But I did it in private. What did she say? I said, Are you getting high off them pills? She said, Girl, no, they ain't uh, enough to get me high. So we get back to the table where we were working at with three of her friends. And about 40 minutes went by. She looked at me and said, do I look high now? And I'm working. I said, what did you say? She said, you said I was getting high. And before I knew it, I was arguing with not just her, but all of her friends to the point where it made me leave. I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. I didn't try to embarrass her. I just asked her a question. When I move with her, it's not nothing she don't know about me. I thought it was okay to ask her that because I, she, I thought we was closer than what she made me feel like that. Okay. And we wasn't because she sick them on me. Before I knew it, I was in That's the bathroom crying, ready to leave. I left. I went back. I called my sponsor and I told her what happened. She picked me up and she took me somewhere else to work. After that was over, I went back to her house. The next day, I was up, I talked to my mother, I talked to my baby's mm -hmm. father, I talked to my sponsor and my best friend, and I was explaining to them what had happened and why I was crying like that. She told me to shut up talking in her house. All right. She told me to get and out. And you did, and that's why you want your money back? I got out. I, I asked her. I said, well, what did about Did you get out, and yes, you sir. want your money back now for the rent? Yes, sir. All right, let me hear from you. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let's see. Okay, we did. We worked the poll. We worked the elections. Uh, we were sequestered. You couldn't have your phone. You couldn't smoke cigarettes. Okay, uh, we went to go have our breakfast. And uh, she asked me, do you get high off of the Red Bulls and the pills? So I explained to her, Red Bull gives you wings, and for the hour or two that I'm not in pain, yes, I'm happy, my mood should change, because I can clean my house, I can run up and down the stairs, I can do everything I need to do. And I do it when I take my medicine, because once it wear off, I can't do nothing but sit down, because I need a hip replacement, I need spacers in my spine where I got a slip disc. I got a metal plate and six screws in my neck. I did a lot of damage to my body using. I need every last one of my pills that I take. Mm -hmm. So we got into, we got into it. Now, actually, she left. She got to crying. We was at the table. And I asked my girlfriend, another friend who has 26 years clean, and another friend who has 18 years clean, do I look high? Then I proceeded to tell them, do you get high off a of Red Bull and Prilosec? And they like, what? She blew up and got to crying, That's talking about it was a went. secret. Talking about it was a secret. And I said, uh, 
I don't have any secrets. And you need to understand the difference. That's why we have a meeting called In Times of Illness that talks about taking medication as it's prescribed. I take my medication as it's pres prescribed, so no, I am not using, will not use. The basic text say you don't never have to use again, and I will never use again. Good. That's not true, y'all. Yeah. Well, some, first of all, ma'am, the type of medication she made reference to is not something you get high off of anyway. No, she's talking about pain. I take Prilosec, I take Gabapentin, I take Flexeril, I take Oxycodone, Oxycodone. I take... Yeah. Uh, I take a couple more. I can't think right now. You messed yeah. up. Yes, I am. Uh, no, I'm, yeah. I don't mean yeah. to say it like that. Yes, but... I am. I am. I got three three major surgeries in my future. You're a poster child for saying no to drugs. All right. Yeah. Uh, and not being funny, so... I guess I am having a little fun because yeah. you don't mind because oh, you no, know, I, don't. I know mm -hmm. that when we mess up our bodies like that, yeah, we can have fun and people can have fun with us. We're the ones that did it. I've messed up my memory in many ways from mm -hmm. smoking too much weed as a kid. The teachers told me when I was smoking weed to sixth grade, come back from recess high yeah. in sixth grade with my eyes red. They say, when oh. you get older, you're going to have short-term memory loss. You're going to have a problem. I'll be <laughs> doggone if I don't well, have short-term memory That's with my memory. <laughs> When I used to slump in my chair in my mm -hmm. seat and they'd like this all the time and my teachers would say, sit up, or else you're gonna have a back problem. Yeah. You see me limping in and out of here, I got on the back <laughs> brace right now. Mm -mm -mm. So we shouldn't be ashamed to tell the consequences of our destructive activity yes. and play with it. I laugh all the time about my memory. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Stop. laughs> all right, let me hear from you. When I woke up that morning, now when I came home, she was already gone to bed. And uh, that morning when I got up, I'm coming past her room and I hear her on the phone telling this man, her son's father, which is very abusive to her, has done many, many things to her that she has told me about. She on the phone telling this fool that I attacked her. No, oh, I did not. Yes. Lie. The, mm -hmm. Did you ask her to leave or did she leave on her own? No, I asked, oh, I asked her to leave. Because I asked her to leave. Because of the controversy that she had started with your... I asked her to leave when I came into the room mm -hmm. and she telling this man that I attacked her. Right. Then I tell her, you need to tell the truth. That's a lie. The, oh, my goodness. Okay. I never and why shouldn't okay. he give her her money back? For the she rent. ate her money. She I what? bought my own food. Ate her money. She got fifteen dollars a month in food stamps. She did not buy her own food. I bought this on this paper she, that she I have. She got fifteen dollars. But that doesn't have anything to do with her paying her rent. Yeah. What is your counterclaim for twenty five hundred for emotional distress? This gentleman, her son's father. Everywhere that we went, he showed up. That's not true. People would come and get me. That's from, not true. People would come and get me and say. Viva is outside arguing with this guy. I go running out there like I got an S on my chest. That's a lie. This was on more than one that occasion. Is a lie. No, so it's you not. volunteered. I have, so you I have volunteered to you volunteered to go and put yourself under That's emotional distress by I, being putting the S on your chest and Oh um, no, no, no. No, when he showed up at my house at four o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. because she wouldn't Did answer her him? phone. No, I'm not okay. no, I'm not so suing how are you anybody. Holding her She's accountable. Me. He didn't well, I thought that was your counterclaim for emotional distress. It is. Well, then you are suing for that. Okay. All yeah. right, so did you sue him? He's the one that showed up at your house. No, but he wouldn't have showed up at my house. I told her I did not want him at my house. All right, but house. she didn't, she can't tell this man what to do. Or can you? Mm. No, right, no, so she can't. I'm gonna no, dismiss can't. your claim, ma'am. You haven't given me anything that okay. she's done directly to you. She... I'll grant you your judgment for your refund of your rent. Uh, there's uh -huh. no legitimate reason for putting you out. When there's an argument, you walk away. You don't stand there and argue and fuss and fight at each other and then put the other one out but without any court order. That judgment wasn't, for the that claim, wasn't if that's it. Honor. Have a okay. good day. <laughs> I've been trying to tell this woman that I love her since this happened. I've been trying to reach out to her since it happened. Everywhere we go, I was trying to say hi to her until she cussed at me and, and uh, called me out my name. Then I went on about my business. But Viva, I still love you. I love you too. Okay. I love a hug. Absolutely. Yeah.
punk, I've been trying to hug you for three months since this happened, but you wouldn't let me. <laughs> oh,